Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Jonathan Andrews, and I'm pleased to welcome you to the latest webinar from Advantage Technologies, High Availability Strategies for Right Facts. Jeff Kunzler, our Vice President of Technical Services, is going to walk you through deployment options for Right Facts to promote high availability and enhance disaster recovery plans. Jeff has over 20 years' experience working with Right Facts. Many of you know Jeff and have worked with him in the past. Before we get started, I want to let you know we'll be answering questions at the end of the webinar. I encourage you to enter any questions you may have into the questions window, and we'll try to answer as many as we can today. If there's a question we cannot answer, or it's better suited to be handled offline, we will reach out to you after this webinar. Finally, this webinar will be recorded, and the recording will be available for download later today in the Advantage Resource Center. Just go to atechnologies.com forward slash resource center. With that, I'll turn the webinar over to Jeff. Thank you, Jonathan. So let's get right into this. Okay, let's start with today's agenda. First, we'll do an overview on high availability and data recovery options with RightFax. Then we'll go into RightFax deployment options. Next, we'll talk about infrastructure best practices, including virtualization, protection of metadata, and image store options. Finally, we'll go over the new SQL image storage module, which was just released with RightFax version 16.2. And as always, we will end with a question and answer session. Okay, about Advantage. So we're a leading provider and integrator of RightFax, CloudFax, and document delivery solutions for over 20 years. Number one in RightFax sales and support in North America. 2017 OpenTech's top three value-added resellers. Our North American-based support desk is, as I mentioned, North American-based. We do not outsource to overseas. Experienced staff of certified engineers and a global customer base, including Fortune 100 companies. Okay, first let me explain the difference between high availability and disaster recovery. High availability is a technology design that minimizes IT disruptions by providing IT continuity through redundant or fault-tolerant components. Disaster recovery is a pre-planned approach for reestablishing IT functions and their supporting components at an alternate facility when normal repair activities cannot recover them in a reasonable time frame. RightFact supports both high availability and disaster recovery, and during this presentation, we will go into details on both. Okay, so let's discuss the RightFax components. First, we have our application server, Doc Transport Services, SQL Database, Microsoft Message Queue, Shared Data Folders, SPC and Fax Gateways, and finally, the Teleco Connection. All the RightFax components on this slide require different strategies for high availability and disaster recovery. I'm going to briefly describe the functionality of each component. The application server is the main RightFax application software. The doc transport service is used to communicate with the PSTN either through legacy fax cards or fax over IP, also known as FOIP, using the SIP protocol. The SQL database is the back-end database used to store fax metadata and, in some cases, the fax images. The MSMQ service is used for fax status tracking and job distribution. The shared data folder is where RightFax stores the fax images. And the SPC slash fax gateway is used to convert the fax packets to TDM, such as T1 or analog lines. And finally, the telco connection is the T1 PRI analog or SIP connections to the PSTN. As I mentioned, different components require different strategies to promote high availability and plan for disaster recovery. On the next few slides, we will discuss different deployment options for your RightFax environment. We will start with the most basic deployment and continue on from there. Okay, single server deployment. In a RightFax single server deployment, all RightFax components are hosted on one server. Other required components such as SQL, MSMQ, and the image store can either be hosted directly on the FAX server or on a separate server. 
On all but the smallest RightFacts implementations, we recommend SQL not be installed on the RightFacts server due to the additional load SQL will put on system resources. Most single server deployments leave both the image store and MSMQ services on the RightFacts application server. So benefits. Obviously, simplified deployment, one server, one box, one virtual server, very easy. Fewer resources required, and your licensing in most cases is minimized. The risk is, where, is the big one in this one. Multiple single points of failure. So if everything's on one server, if any of the components on that server fail from SQL to MSMQ, image store, the application itself, or the server, you have failures and you have, in theory, extended downtime. Also, your DR involves a restore from backup. So to bring up another server at a second DR site, you'd have to actually reinstall WriteFacts on another site, relicense it, repoint it to a copy of a database, and you'll have extended downtime. Really not a great solution. Next, single server remote doc transport. So when we move the doc transport service to a remote server, we reduce the workload of the application server. And although we still have a single point of failure, we can still receive faxes if the application server fails. A big advantage of this configuration is the ability to install the remote doc transport server or servers in a remote office and eliminate the need to run SIP over the WAN. This will greatly increase the reliability of your faxes. For example, if your RightFax application server is located in your Dallas data center, but your IP PBX is based in your New York office, you can install the RDT in the New York office, the initial processing of the faxes will start there, then it will be sent to Dallas for the final processing. Since a fax is answered in the New York office, it just needs to do a regular file copy to the Dallas data center and will not be susceptible to network latency as it would be if we kept the doc transport service in Dallas. Okay, now this is a single server with cold spare. So a single server with cold spare write fax implementation allows you to license a second write fax server with a 50% discount and run it as a cold spare in the same or another data center. The biggest negative with the single server cold spare is historical faxes will not be available on the cold spare system. Since a cold spare uses a separate database, there is no way to replicate the faxes between them. WriteFax does have tools to replicate the users and their phone books, so that will not be an issue. You'll also need to come up with a strategy to cut back to the primary server once it's back online. There could be additional downtime during the cutback if you need to copy the faxes that came in during the primary server downtime back to the primary server. Okay, collectives, WriteFax collectives. So a WriteFax collective is the best solution for true high availability and disaster recovery. Since you can have up to 12 WriteFax application servers geographically located in multiple data centers, you can truly load balance all your WriteFax services and network connections. The biggest challenge with a collective is the replication of SQL and the WriteFax images. As you can see from the diagram to the right, all the WriteFax application servers are connected to a single SQL server and image store. WriteFax 10.6 does have the ability to write images to concurrent image stores, but it cannot write to concurrent SQL databases. So it is important to have a solid SQL replication plan in place to eliminate the single point of failure. Let's talk about the benefits. So as I mentioned, scale out up to 12. So you can have a very, very large enterprise WriteFax system running on one collective. Geographic redundancy, so you can have a couple of servers in one data center and a couple on another. Additional throughput just means load balance. We have more services working so we can handle more I.O., more processing, more conversions. No downtime due to a failure of a single server. You, you can run if you, if you had a 12-node collective, four of them went down, maybe a whole data center was down, you still have eight working for you, should be fine. Automatic client failover. We'll discuss that a little more later with load balancing, but there is no human intervention when a collective node goes down, which is a big one. All the other models I showed you earlier will need human intervention when there's a failover. For a collective, you do need a shared services module, which requires additional licensing. Okay, now we'll discuss HA and DR options in regards to the infrastructure that is supporting your WriteFax environment. So the previous slides, we really talked about HADL within WriteFax. Now we'll talk about some of the other things 
that right fax touches, how we can keep that reliable and eliminate a single point of failure. Okay. RightFact supports both VMware and Hyper-V, and when installed in a virtual environment, you can reap the benefits of virtualization, such as hardware failover, replication, and snapshots. In the past, fax servers had to be physical due to the fact they had to accommodate a physical fax card. As virtualization became the norm, the market responded by creating a virtual fax board that could run on your virtual server. So by using the SR140 virtual fax board, your right fax system can also reap the benefits of virtualization and you no longer have to worry about specialized hardware. Currently, a majority of our customers are running right fax on virtual server and service. As I mentioned, there are some big benefits and I would imagine most people right now on this call are running some kind of VMware or Hyper-V and already know the advantages of running a virtual environment. So let's talk a little bit about running T38 SIP over redundant RightFax service. So as I mentioned earlier, RightFax does support geo-redundancy when using a RightFax collective. When running your fax lines over SIP, you also have the ability to reroute your inbound DID numbers to anywhere in the United States. This is extremely important for disaster recovery. If your primary data center is down, your redundant RightFax servers will automatically start receiving your inbound DID calls. This is extremely complicated and often not possible when using legacy TDM connections such as a PRI T1 line. Please contact your RightFax account manager for recommendations on T38 optimized SIP providers that can offer you all these advantages. Okay, so now we can talk about redundant fax gateways. So basically, if your right fax connection to the PS10 requires you to use a fax gateway or gateways, we recommend redundant gateways to eliminate a single point of failure. Fax gateways can be configured in, a multiple, in multiple data centers to provide disaster recovery. So again, the gateways are really what's needed when you're running virtual servers because sometimes you need to go from virtual to physical as in regards to your PS10 connection. For example, if your write fax server is on multiple virtual servers, you're going to run basic SIP right out the virtual NIC. You're going to talk to one or more gateway, such as the Sonus mentioned on the slide, and the gateway's job is to convert that to a PRI analog, and in some cases, they use just basically as an, an SBC, and that's called SIP to SIP. So a lot of times, our, a lot of companies are now going with SIP providers for fax, and now you use a gateway, but in this case they're called an SPC, to be used between your right fax server and your SIP provider. It's like a firewall and it performs other tasks that you need when you're going SIP to SIP. Okay, SQL database strategies. Right fax can be integrated with SQL in multiple ways. For very small implementations of eight channels or less, you can use the built-in SQL Express. We also support the full version of SQL installed on the fax server, but we don't recommend it due to the additional resources it uses. The best way to leverage your company's existing SQL infrastructure to take advantage of SQL tools for HA and DR, including database mirroring, log shipping, and SQL availability groups. So let me explain that a little more. What I'm saying is most enterprise or even mid-sized companies already have what they call these days a SQL farm. They might have SQL in a cluster. They might have log shipping between multiple servers. So what I'm saying is leverage that. No reason to spin up a dedicated SQL server for right facts because then you're introducing a single point of failure. Use your existing SQL infrastructure. Let's point the right facts to it and reap all the benefits that SQL already has. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a SQL expert, but I know the mirroring, the log, ship, log shipping, availability groups, those will help keep your, your SQL server online and redundant. Okay, so Microsoft Message Queue, something was introduced, I think, right fax 10.0 and greater, where it really became important. So on all but single server right fax implementations, we recommend redundant MSMQ services. This can be as easy as running the MSMQ service on multiple nodes of a collective or using a Windows file server cluster. When running MSMQ service on multiple right fax nodes, 
human intervention is needed during a failover since rights acts can only talk to one common MSMQ service. With a cluster, no human intervention is needed since the cluster will take care of the failover. And let me go into the slide a little deeper. So a lot of companies are, are a little shy of running a, a cluster, a Microsoft cluster. I know it's, it's a beast, it's a little complicated. So although I think it is the best way to do it, it's just it's just not always the best way in some environments. So we do a lot of times what we do is what I mentioned earlier is we'll actually, and let's say a, a three node collective, we will run MSMQ on all three nodes, but we'll point all three to a primary, let's say node one, although it's running on node two and three. And if node one went down, there would be some human intervention to go into right facts and then go into the GUI and point it to the second one or third one if you needed to. So you're still up and running, but human intervention is needed in that case. Because if your primary went down, MSMQ wouldn't be available and you'd be you'd have some issues. You wouldn't be totally down, but faxes would not flow properly in and out. The cluster is great because if you run it on a on a clustered server and the primary goes down, the active passive cluster the active becomes passive, the passive becomes active and that kicks in, no human intervention is needed. Very easy but again, a little complex. Okay, so now the fax image shared data storage. A lot of people that are running collectives already know about this, so when implementing write fax in a collective, you need a common file share. Write fax supports all the disaster recovery and high availability strategy listed above. So we support drive mirroring, which is some form of RAID, file system replication, and active passive deployment, which really means a cluster again. A lot, of, a lot of companies run a SAN, and it's important to understand that if you're running a SAN and you have a cluster, you are collective, you cannot slice off different LUNs for different nodes. They all talk to the same storage. So what a lot of companies do is they'll, they'll throw a cluster in front of the SAN, set up a LUN on the cluster, and that's what you'll present to the right facts collective. So if that primary active node of the cluster went down, the Microsoft cluster kicks in and then you're talking to the secondary node, no human intervention is needed. In NAS, it's a little easier. You can actually have NAS replicated to multiple network attached storage and it's really easy because uh, WriteFax can write to current, current NAS. So what can happen is your primary NAS is running and WriteFax is writing to it, your secondary NAS is running and WriteFax is writing to that too, but it's really pointed only to the primary. If the primary goes down, WriteFax will notice that and it can't get to it anymore and it'll automatically start writing to the secondary. So that's, that's a relatively new with VET version 10.6, the ability to write to concurrent image stores. Okay, let's talk about the new SQL image storage module. So new with WriteFax version 16.2 is the optional SQL image store module. This module moves the images from the file system to the SQL database. It uses a separate database from the WriteFax metadata. This can really help with HA and DR since most SQL implementations are already using some form of redundancy. And now you will get the same redundancy with your WriteFax images and you do not have to worry about replicating the WriteFax image store. Replicating Windows file systems is often a challenge due to the complexity of the implementation. We have tested the SQL image store and there is no degradation of service and in some cases, you will see improved performance. And as you can see on the bottom of the slide, there is an additional license required. So you can always talk to your account manager on pricing. Um, I could talk a little bit about the slide here. As you could see on the uh, diagram, what's going on now is you have the application server, as always, and instead of just a write fact SQL database, you will also have an image database. So it is, um, built into SQL now. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, again, it comes down to your environments, your, your SQL environment in your office. If you're already doing mirroring, log shipping, all that's gonna be great for your images because the same thing's gonna happen. So if your primary WriteFax SQL database went down or your primary image database went down, using the SQL tools to replicate, WriteFax can automatically point over to the other location or the other database and you're gonna come right up. It's a little easier than, than replicating data and having to deal with another image store for images. So it just it makes it a little easier and it seems like that's the, the way things are going these days, trying to put data 
in SQL, not just data, but also the images, keeping it simple and clean. Okay, earlier I mentioned WriteFax Collective, so here's where a load balancer is real important. So when installing WriteFax in a multi-node collective, we always recommend a load balancer. During normal operations, a load balancer will load balance the client connections to all WriteFax nodes. If a node fails, the load balancer will automatically redirect client connections to other nodes. Load balancers monitor both the IP address and the WriteFax ports. So even if a WriteFax node is still up, but the WriteFax services fail, it will know WriteFax is down and redirect the client connections. We support really any of the load balancers out there. So the big ones are the Citrix, Netscaler, Barracuda, the F5s, and Cisco. And the key again is the load balancer. It alleviates manual intervention. And that's really the, the really the, the goal of this whole webinar is to go through strategies to allow WriteFax to stay up even during an, an outage of a single node or an outage of a network connection. That's where the load balancer really helps out. Okay, let's go through takeaways. So the first thing we did is we identified all single points of failure. We stated redundancy allows for application continuity and as I mentioned, and I can't stress it really anymore, the collective deployment is preferred. Sure, we'll support cold spares, we'll support remote dock transports, but for true redundancy, a collective is the way to go. Data replication is recommended. It should, I would love to say data replication is required, but I can't, it is recommended because you want to have your SQL database replicated. You want to make sure your shared data directory is replicated, unless of course you're using the new SQL image store, then it's already replicated with SQL, and MSMQ can be replicated or at least clustered. And lastly, the new SQL image store module, which simplifies high availability and is only available with WriteFax 16.2. No other version has that. 10.6 does not have that. Okay, I think we're ready for questions, John. Thank you, Jeff. All right, yeah, as you said, we're going to move on to our question and answer session. So if you have any questions, please put them into the questions panel and we'll be sure to get to them um, if we can. So let's start with the first one here. We have a question about implementing a collective. What issues should I consider, uh, especially if my company does not have a load balancer? Okay, yeah, that's a great question and it comes up a lot. So I think what you're trying to say is you would love to do a collective sounds like a great design, except you don't want to invest in a full load balancer. So is it possible? The answer is yes, and I would say probably 25 to 30% of our customers implement a collective without a load balancer. There are other tools you can use. One is you could not do anything and just have DNS point to one node. Obviously, the problem with that is if that node goes down, WriteFax still works. It's just your client connections will get an RPC error. You could train your users to go file open and just go to the second node. You could do that. I mean, that's not the ideal way. The other way is dynamic DNS. A little better, how that works is it'll automatically load balance, but it will not monitor what's up and down. So as your clients or even applications are connecting to WriteFax, they'll hit node one, they'll hit node two. The, load, the, the dynamic DNS will send them back and forth. But if node one goes down, approximately 50% of your connections will get a failure because load, the um, DNS doesn't know it's down and it'll, they'll get what's called an RPC error, and then you'd have to go in as an administrator and take the down node out of the dynamic DNS and have it automatically point to the second node. Obviously, the load balancer is ideal because in all those scenarios, there is no human intervention needed. The load balancer is monitoring the IP, so it knows it's pingable and up, and even, as I mentioned earlier, it's monitoring ports. So your server can be up, but let's just say the right fact server module crashed. If the server module crashed, Port 10520 will become unavailable. The load balancer will see that and redirect everyone to the up nodes. So with no human intervention needed at all, you would just have to go in after and see what's wrong with your, your node, bring it up, and it, it starts redirecting everyone back. Hopefully that answers the question. What else you got, John? Sounds good. Uh, next one, these are, I have a couple about the SQL image storage module. Okay. Um, how will it affect the size of my SQL database is one question, and will WriteFax still store images in the shared data folder uh, if we're running the SQL image storage module? Okay, two, two excellent questions. First of all, the 
SQL Image Store does not do any compression. So it won't affect your RightFacts database, which is important. You don't want to bloat your RightFacts database, but it creates a second database for the images, and that will be as large as your current image store. So for example, you're running a RightFacts system and, and you go to your image store, which in, in, let's say on a single server install is on the C, Program 86, RightFacts image, or in a collective, it's, it's that shared location I've been talking about earlier. You right click on image, go to properties, let's see how big it is. Let's say it's four gig, two gig, whatever it is, that's how big your SQL database is gonna be and it will grow from there. Remember, faxes are not large, they're about 35K per page. So in the world of SQL, having a two, three, four gig SQL database is not, not, not terribly large anyway. SQL will have no problem, but it is something to take into consideration. And to answer part two is, yes, once you implement that module and it kicks in and there are tools to have it move everything, it's different if you implement it on a new install, then the image store is never used. If it's an existing implementation and you want to enable it and license it, you will run the tool that will actually move, well, it actually copies the images to the SQL. Once you're tested and happy, you can then get back the space and remove the images. So it does not need them in both places. So you do gain space on your file store once you move it to SQL. Okay. Great. Excellent. Uh, question about Sonus gateways. Um, they're currently running a PRI and they want to move to SIP down the road. Can the Sonus gateway accommodate that? Definitely. Uh, actually, people that know Sonus know the model is called an SBC 1000. So not only is it a gateway, it is also a session border controller. So there are some licensing that might be needed, almost definitely, unless you purchase that way, the, the SIP to SIP license. Basically, it's, it's just a license that allows it to convert SIP on one side of it to SIP to the other and use it as a session border controller. But it's a great question because the Sonus is a great investment because it seems like that's the future. A lot of people want to get rid of PRI lines and want to get rid of all physical connections and they would love to go pure SIP. And I'm happy to say they are, most of these SIP providers, especially the ones we deal with, are doing a great job with FACs and P38 FACs and having a, a Sonus now pl with PRIs plugged into it, maybe in a year from now you want to unplug those PRIs and go pure SIP to your carrier. It's not a waste of investment. You have a great product ready to go. Perfect. Uh, and this follows right up on that. Uh, could you describe how T38 SIP trunk service works and the benefits that my organization would get if I do go from a PRI to a, a SIP to SIP model. Sure. I mean, that was an uh, earlier slide actually showed it. I'll just, I'll just reiterate it again. So the huge advantage of, of going pure SIP is the complexities of, of inbound numbers. So in an outbound fax, it, it's really the DR scenario, even with PRI, is pretty easy. So for example, you have two nodes and two data centers. Node one goes down. So this is what we call DR or geographically dispersed right fact systems. Node one goes down. You have tools like a load balancer, maybe like a, a you know, a, a load balancer that's monitoring both nodes or even DNS that could repoint your clients and everything to the secondary server. The secondary server does have active PRIs. No problem. Outbound faxes are going to flow. But remember, your numbers, your DID numbers are all tied to that first PRI on your primary. Now, there are some rare occasions where the carrier, being like, let's say, AT&T or Verizon, if it's usually within the same city, same state, can move those DIDs. Usually not that quick. In some cases, maybe, but it's, it's rare. Most of the time, your biggest problem is going to be inbound. Where SIP comes into play is, since everything is virtual and IP-based, you can have a server in New York, and you can have a server in your data center in San Francisco, and if New York goes down, the San Francisco will automatically stop processing the SIP calls because it's all virtual. So what happens is, I mean, it's, it's done in a lot of different ways, but for example, a lot of times what will happen is, there is a, they're both connected to your carrier and they're load balancing, they're both connecting and they're both grabbing inbound calls. So if the primary goes down, it's not grabbing inbound calls, the secondary is just gonna take up the load and grab them, pull them in, because the numbers are all virtual. There's not, it's not related, it's not, not like an area code, the number is physically located in New York. Your carrier, once you port them to them, has control of those numbers, and then they can direct them to any IP address that's asking for them. And of course, there's security involved, there's session border controllers, but we can go into details. If you're looking, you can, we can always do a demo, or you can talk to your account manager, and we can explain how it's done, and who are the best providers for that kind of, you know, SIP connection. Anything else you got? 
Yep, I think we'll take one more question, and uh, if there are any other questions, we'll address them offline. Um, can write facts accept SIP connections from multiple SBC gateways you know, for inbound redundancy? Yes, definitely. So as I just, I think, kind of explained it. So if you have yep. two fax servers, let's say, let's keep it simple, two fax servers, one SIP provider. The, they're, they're like your carrier, so the calls are coming in to them, and, and it is connection-based. It, it, it goes all the way through, which is, which is really nice. In other words, if you're using the right carrier, you're not doing store and forward. So the flow of the, the call is it's coming in, your SIP provider is then immediately, at, they're not really answering the call, they're continuing on through an IP address and sending it through. So it's really, one is going to grab it and the other. So the, the, the key is you can set it up and you have to work with your provider, you can set it up with different kind of round robin strategies where maybe a primary, all of them are coming into one unless it goes down. You can load balance, so some come into one and the other. It's really based on how you do it. But the, the bottom line is the answer is yes, and that's, that's a big advantage. So you're load balanced on outbound and inbound, and you have DR and high availability on outbound and inbound. Great, thanks. Um, I think that's all the questions we'll cover today. If you do think of a question after this webinar, please feel free to call us or email and we'd be happy to help. Uh, we'll post a recording of this webinar and the slide deck up on the Advantage Resource Center later today. Uh, thank you for joining us and have a great day. Thank you, everyone.